Thank you very much, Paula. Great afternoon to everyone. Great afternoon to the other panelists and also all the attendees connected here with us today. As Paula stated, I'll be producing, I'll be presenting, pardon, the Leader is 2.0 program, which is this reformulated approach we have for our traditional NRI support program here at LACNIC. So some of you may be aware, uh, Leader is was our institutional uh, NRI support program that we established back in 2017, where we provided two types of support. One dealt with stimulating and incentivizing uh, the organization of local NRIs, local IGF initiatives. And in that vein, what we did is we provided technical advice. We also provided speakers for those events and uh, small uh, financing for those events. And then the second part of the traditional leaders program dealt with travel support for prominent NRI coordinators or leaders to come to the LAC IGF to do an expose on their own initiative and the issues they are facing within their community and also participate in exchanges with other NRI coordinators. Now with the RS 2.0, we really wanted to put the focus on intersessional work and how could an entity like LACNIC really support communities uh, in the periods between uh, the face-to-face -face events that happen. And of course, as Paula explained, uh, this year there's been a huge challenge with organizing face-to-face -face events. So this evolution was timely, it was serendipitous. And uh, we have now a funding and mentoring program uh, which will provide modest grants of 1500 US. Um, these are one-time grants. And it is focused on producing uh, specific outcomes. Um, the outcomes in particular are these short projects uh, whereby you will have to do a bit of research on the thematic areas we are going to discuss just now. And at the end of that research, you will be responsible for producing either a digital publication of 10 to 15 pages, a series of podcasts, infographics and the like animations, or even a completely original idea that we haven't suggested, you are free to do that during the application process. And we intend to host these digital outputs in a repository that we have enabled from second quarter 2021. So we're really expecting a diverse set of ideas and research to come out of this because the idea is that uh, you look at the thematic areas that we have mm -hmm. here and you really develop the nuances as to how uh, these issues affect you within your community and I'm not only referring to your community at a national level imagine you could be in a remote village in a large country and there are particular things that are facing you this is a perfect time to uh, develop that expose and to share our uh, internet governance knowledge with the rest of the community. The thematic areas that we have are internet and the pandemic, impacts on human rights, digital inclusion, and security and trust. And these are not coincidental, meaning these are not uh, unintentional, they're actually quite intentional because of course the first thematic area uh, is very timely with everything that's happening in the world right now and you will see a high degree of alignment with thematic areas two and three uh, with um, areas that will be discussed at the global IGF. So it's a, a good opportunity if you're already in the space uh, to produce content at the local level and have that content shared uh, across pairs here in Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, we have a couple of selection criteria that we're looking forward to. Um, alignment to thematic area, coherence and problem definition, originality, and I would stress on that, that has to be very important. Uh, we do not want to fund existing works, they have to be new works or new approaches to what might be existing. Uh, geographic diversity and stakeholder diversity. And stakeholder diversity, uh, please note that you can either uh, present uh, to the program as an individual, or as a collaboration among individuals. So if your other collaborators come from different stakeholder groups, that is more than welcome and it is recognized within the selection criteria. Our selection committee, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but we have a number of prominent people from the region who will be part of this committee. Ms. Naja Kasumi, who is the chief convener of the Caribbean IGF, Ms. Raquel Gatto, and we'll introduce Raquel in just a minute. Mr. Nacho Estrada, the general manager of Black TLD, uh, myself and Paulo Otegi. 
And last but not least, this is just a visual. And of course, you'll be able to see these slides afterwards to understand what the timelines are like. So the call for applications began already on the 21st of September. As Paula said, there's still time. We have up until the 23rd of October. So a little less than two weeks to receive applications. Two weeks from there, you have a response whether you're successful or not because the selection committee will go through the applications, apply the criteria that I showed you just now, and there'll be a ranking uh, for each application. The successful projects are expected to start on the 4th of November, and you have a three month period upon which you have to complete this research project. Uh, in that time, you will one, receive the one-time grant, and you will two, also be assigned a mentor which is one of the persons who are, you saw just now from the selection committee, and you have access to 10 hours of that mentor's time within the three month period. You're free to arrange between yourself and the mentor how you like to use that time. So I know we are very short on time and I will be looking forward to the questions that will be coming up uh, in the course of today's webinar. Uh, so to continue uh, with the discussion, I would like to take this opportunity to invite Ms. Raquel Gatto to speak. Uh, Raquel, as I said, is a prominent reference person in internet governance matters in Latin America and the Caribbean. She was a three-time MAG member, had influential positions uh, throughout the years on Nick BR and Internet Society. And of course, she is a selection committee member and imminent mentor for Leaderist 2.2. It is a joy and a pleasure to have Raquel here with us and for Raquel to speak. So please, Raquel. Muito obrigada, Kevon. Eu vou falar em português para quem precisar da tradução. Uh, thank you, Kevin. I'm going to speak Portuguese for those of you who need translation. I um, and I'm going to take advantage of the situation that Laknik is uh, giving us uh, this opportunity to participate in the program and uh, also to bring uh, this diversity, to bring this opportunity and this diversity for us. My challenge is to speak slowly, but for those of you who uh, know me, I'm quite, I tend to speak rather fast, so let me know if I'm going too fast. As Kevin said, it's a great honor to be part of this 2.0 version of the leaders uh, program. This was a uh, thought of uh, very warmly people made a great effort to provide not just the financial support to um, uh, implement a project just so that it will become a reality but also to give an opportunity to be in touch with us with me with my colleagues uh, with um, um, the colleagues that uh, uh, Kevin said and uh, we are willing to work with you and that you may have a, an opportunity to work with those that contribute to it with the governance of internet. And here I got to the topic that uh, I'm, uh, I work with. In addition to the $1,500 uh, given as a financial support, you would have a mentorship in this Leaders 2.0. And I'm going to give you my perspective that is um, facilitation and support. We won't be the owners of the project of the successful candidate, nor are we going to do his or her work. What we need to do is to understand what the problem is, what the project is, and what is the key issue, the key question that the candidate brings and help him or her uh, develop the project, uh, which we can uh, work out together so that the project may be relevant to the governance of internet in the region. So let me say that we have three big actions as mentors or tutors uh, to uh, review, to comment, and to have impact. To reviewing is part of our work. Each candidate will present uh, minimally a month the uh, requirements of what uh, he or she wants to do, why it is important, how long it would take, who is involved, the cost, uh, 
and that is all those basic requirements that a project typically takes but we are also i'm also going we are also going to review the scope as this is the first one really we don't have uh, any previous parameters or previous proposals É, alocado. Então, talvez refletir, né, em conjunto, como é que a gente pode. É, escutar. This is to seek connecting not only with other people or specialists or mechanisms, but also with already existing processes. So there is a lot of information out there over the past 20, 30 years, during which the governance of the internet has gained space, but these are not always easily accessible or not, are not well known. So the role of connecting with the repository of information is useful for projects and to connect with other people. So eventually the project could include a section on interviews and also on meeting other people. Therefore, the tutors and mentors are here to help you out. And the last phase is incidents. I think this is one of the most important phases. And this, because of the precise context in which the govern internet governance is evolving. If we have time, I will be giving a few words on that. But we have to see what the impact of the project will be. Very often, this is not just about launching a project, a podcast, or an article, and then to wait and see what happens but these things can be planned jointly so to have an impact and to have a project that is relevant of course this will depend on each area this will depend on the profile on the candidate or also on the scope of the project so depending on all these issues we will consider a couple of examples. And if I have a couple of minutes left, Paula, let me refer to a very specific example of what is happening in the international scenario. For example, IGF, which will be taking place virtually because of the pandemic. This will be in the month of November. On that occasion, the idea was to bring together more people in order to start reviewing the summit of the Internet Information Society with global reference and to consider the principles and the commitments of the Internet governance. All these things will occur in 2025. So the chairperson has a very difficult name to pronounced. So she proposed a, holding a series of webinars. These will be taking place every Wednesday. There was one this morning. And the idea is to consider precisely what, uh, what, what is the information we have, what is the data we have in order to meet the requirements of the IGF, as well as the way forward in order to determine what will be more effective. Now, parallel to this, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, put the issue of digital transformation on the table. This goes beyond internet governance. We are they are considering digitalization of society. And this is still a priority. This is established as a priority, the United Nations agenda. So we have to consider what we have to improve in terms of participation and impact. Therefore, this is very important for the region. So the idea is to consider all these topics in the summit of the Information Society. The acronym is IS. So what are the participation statistics from 2006 to date. 
and based on that to create what well, we create the data based policies this is a fact it is a fact that there are sectors that are not represented there are regions that are not represented so we really have to base everything on numbers this was quite interesting because they showed us for example the one that when the IGF took place in the region in Mexico and Brazil, the participation from people in the region increased considerably. This seems to be quite obvious, but it is very important to maintain those connections. And you can ask like IGF in this context. Therefore, all these projects, and I think I'm running out of time, therefore, one of the ideas of this project is to see what is happening globally. For example, through a small incentive, we can ask ourselves these questions and relate these to already existing processes. In addition to creating new ideas and new projects. So I hope this at least gave you a view of what we as tutors can give you, namely these three actions which mentors have to do to reflect together on the project, on the scope of the project, to connect with people and important processes, and in addition to that, to think of the incidents and the, and the impact that this project will have in order to be successful. Thank you so much. It's so hot over here. <laughs> We have 32 degrees Celsius, Sao Paulo. Yesterday we had 18, but it's very hot today. Thank you. Thank you, Raquel, for your presentation. That was excellent. It's a pleasure to have you here in our program as a mentor. And those who will benefit from this will surely appreciate that. Thank you very much. And we'll continue speaking later on. We now invite everyone to ask questions in the q and a panel that you have at the bottom so we can talk with all we can talk with all our speakers now i'd like to invite guillerme alves who will be speaking about different subjects he will be telling us about his experience with the previous leaderist program because the youth observatory counted on our support and He's, he also was in a Black IGF panel last year. And we'd also like to listen to his standpoint on different issues on this new Leaders 2.0 we now have, which Kevin referred to when we started. And Yemi, maybe you can give us your standpoint on the impact of the youth observatory for example in the intersessional period now before giving the floor to you for all those of you who are following us let me tell you that Guillermo works strategically in youth idea he received the award and he is a journalist he works on technology and society and former editorial chief of Observatorio de la Juventud, the Youth Observatory. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Welcome, Guillermo. Thank you, Paola. I'm going to speak in Portuguese. I'll try to speak slowly. Thank you very much for the invitation, Paola, Kevin, Akil. Hello. I start to think about how I could channel all these questions and topics. I thought it would be quite interesting to think about my experience and the experience of our colleagues, which I met in the youth community, and to consider which are the challenges we are facing in order to become part of the community in the long term. So when considering the challenges to also tackle the topics that you raised, Paola. So, so the first challenge when we speak about youth in this ecosystem is training. We are aware that the internet governance is full of acronyms, full of organizations and stakeholders. So for, so for someone who is not familiar with all 
those concepts find it a bit difficult to understand what internet governance is, how it works, why do we have these forums, and so on. So training is very important. I think that in recent years, as a community, we managed to advance in this with a youth programs. In Brazil, we have examples such as TGI. We also have examples of Internet Society and of ICANN. And even Leaders 2.0 had a very important space inviting young people, attracting young people to these spaces. Now, it is very important to see how more and more young people are participating in this ecosystem. And one of the challenges I see is the participation in the forums. I'm aware that this is a very important part of the community. It is precisely in the forums where we get to know the other people, we get to know other organizations and share projects. I think 2020 was a year in which we personally could not attend these meetings. We really missed those opportunities. So now forums are held online and nevertheless, they are important. This allows young people to participate in this environment, in these environments, at least remotely, and also interact with many people. And the third challenge is that of inclusion, inclusion and legitimacy. So the young people who are now joining these new spaces and communities have to feel that they belong to that community. So all the other stakeholders and sectors involved in governance should accept these new minds, these young people who are approaching us. They might not have so many experience in terms of their age and years, but they are very willing to participate in these spaces and also to act professionally. I think that Lideris 1.0 had played a very important role regarding the legitimacy, because in addition to participating in the forum, they also participated in the, I also participated in the organization, organization of Black IGF. We were organizing this together with other colleagues. So that was great. But also Black IGF provides the opportunity to share these experiences. It was wonderful to, to do this, for example, Young People and Internet Society are a group that arose as a result of initiative for young people. So I'd like to share initiatives and projects. I'd like to tell you about what we're doing and also what are the things that we perceive are lacking. Because youth are a community that is in that stage where we are students or young professionals, so we can participate in all the areas of the governance. We really want to understand that universe. So the program 1.0 played a role in that area of legitimacy and inclusion. So I think it is very important to be able to talk with the community during the forum. A fourth challenge that I identify as something that is very relevant is the challenge of involvement post events. In other words, intersessional involvement, because we speak about all the regional forums and the national forums. And these are key moments during the year in which we can meet and get together and discuss policies. Now, during the intersessional period, for those who are not very much involved in the community, find it very difficult to keep in contact with all the other people. Sometimes it is easy to keep in contact from, with people from our own country, but when we speak about Latin America and the different countries, there is a very big cultural diversity. And it is in those occasions where it is difficult to keep in contact with players and stakeholders from other countries and regions. So Leaderist 2.0 provides an enormous opportunity to tackle that challenge, namely involvement in during the intersessional period to deepen into the policies and projects. If we manage to do this in our communities, we really manage to democratize our works. As I said, when I started, governance is like a 
letter soup with many, many acronyms. So the idea is to bring this closer to younger people and other publics and tell them, well, this is a project that stems from an opportunity provided by LACNIC. So we really have to explain what is the function and in other words, to expand the discussion to go beyond the form. And within the communities. And I thought that that initiative was very good in 2020, in such a difficult year, to think of maintaining the interest and how to maintain the interest in the leaders program. I think that all uh, the uh, instruments are there for, to work. Uh, it's very relevant and it's impossible to speak of the internet this year without uh, speaking of uh, uh, the pandemic. And I think that, and also, talking about uh, human rights and the internet is it's essential to be able to do it in other programs and other initiatives and to maintain the digital inclusion, which is so important. It is even more important than 10 years ago. And in 2020, those challenges were absolutely expanded, especially the difficulty to access to technologies in uh, um, isolation settings, it became much more relevant. And then the stability and the security of the networks, it's another uh, key thing. We have to invite the community to get uh, involved and we need to invite other stakeholders to for the for uh, all of us uh, working for the security of the internet. We have many challenges and I think that these issues are essential. As Raquel said, I think that the financial support, of course, is very important. And we even know that when we speak of participating in um, the fora, having the community uh, participate, we have an econ a, a socioeconomic problem. We, we have filters. Who has access or who knows the languages the uh, events uh, are held in? But we also have the mentors. Mentorship is something very important because having that support, even if it's remote, will help you uh, develop your project uh, with much more certainty because you have the support of somebody who has many years of experience for uh, to discuss the topics uh, that we mentioned. So I think that the last challenge is to manage to solve uh, the difficulties in the long run. I talked about uh, this last year. Today, I'm not so young. I'm not in the same age group of uh, the um, 18 to 25 years uh, group. Uh, and I've seen uh, the experience uh, of other colleagues that it is important to understand that the governance community is open to the forums, but also for professionals. We see that the uh, community is giving us uh, the possibility to work, uh, working together with the stakeholders and the organization. The challenge we see is that today, it's much stronger after some years of engaging uh, the young. We need to think how we can keep those young people in that space. Today, I continue to work with the young people working and committed to the governance of the internet. And that can only happen if we all uh, get engaged. Um, I think that this is the way I would put it. The one point, leaders 1.0, who had uh, one uh, uh, aim and 2.0 has a different aim, a new one. That was perfect, Guilherme. Thank you. That was very interesting. All the challenges you mentioned, all uh, the topics uh, that you touched upon that uh, the young people are facing. We know that day after day, they are gaining spaces in uh, um, in the discussions. Uh, so there are many challenges ahead, but there's a lot of space gained too. So we thank you a lot. We're going to continue to talk. And now I give the floor to Kevin. Thank you very much, Paula. And thank you, Guillermo. Thank Guillermo. Thank you, Raquel, for your views, for sharing uh, exactly some of the challenges and opportunities we have. And I particularly like how Guillermo uh, managed to give his perspective, uh, both from uh, the perspective of an organizer 
uh, in terms of the youth like IGF, some of the challenges are faced. He talked about training needs, he talked about access to funding, and then actually being able to go and talk in global uh, policy dialogues. And of course, uh, this yeah, the whole question of remote participation is a moot point because we are all remote participants <laughs> because of the pandemic. And again, uh, Raquel also mentioned um, the 2016 experience where we had a lot of presence uh, from the region in the global IGF uh, by virtue of it being held in Mexico. Uh, but we do see that there is uh, still a challenge to not only reach to those spaces, but also maintain our presence in those spaces. And when we talk about participation, participation isn't just limited to giving a talk or giving a workshop. Participation is really occupying space and taking up as well uh, leadership positions and being able to have a really a uh, hard or very true influence on global uh, policy making and policy shaping events. And it's with that in mind that we have with us uh, Mr. Lito Ibarra, who is one of the fathers of the internet of, in El Salvador. And he's a regular convener of the Salvadorian Internet Dialogues and IGF Spaces in El Salvador. He served as a board member of LACNIC. He is a current board member at ICANN, so leadership position, exactly what we were talking about uh, when we talk about Latin Americans and Caribbeans in internet governance. And most recently, he was awarded the LACNIC Lifetime Achievement Award. We are very happy to have Lito here with us uh, this afternoon to talk a bit more about the involvement of the technical community in these spaces and maintaining a presence in these spaces to impact global policy and of course uh, in hoping that these policies as well impact our local environments in the long run um, because of, of that input that we've had. So I hand the virtual floor over to Lito right now. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Paula. I'm going to speak Spanish. I hope you can uh, hear me and uh, you have an uh, interpretation. Well, first of all, I want to thank the organizers, Paula and Kevin, but also the entire team of LACNIC that is uh, behind, uh, uh, that is in the back end, uh, making this webinar possible, this program of leaders um, and point uh, 2.0, and I want to thank Guillerme and Raquel for their experience. I think that it all, it's all aimed at uh, promoting and motivating the people who are listening to us now, as well as new people, to so that they will um, uh, be encouraged to participate and to have an active role in the governance of internet in uh, the region. This is a topic that we have worked with for many years. Let me read the governance of the internet definition. It's, it's the development and implementation of principles, standards, rules, and procedures for decision-making and common problems or uh, by the government, the private sector, the academia, and the civil sector to shape um, the evolution and the use of the internet. This concept, just as the seven baskets of the internet, you may find them in a book that is quite popular on these topics, that is Introduction to Internet Governance by Johan Kurvalija. It's been translated to several languages and you can download it from the internet. You can search it and download it. It's a, this is a book that introduces you to the internet governance issues that are constantly evolving. Just as the internet evolves, uh, remember for those of you who are not aware, the internet, turned 51 years old this year, and it became popular in 1992-93 when the, the web browsers were created. Well, today we all need them, and we need a number of apps that run uh, with the internet. Now, what is the issue? That's why I wanted to read the definition. There are several things here. One of them is, how do we agree as a society, as a commun as communities, how do we agree with the rules of exchange and uh, the rules of the game uh, among us to 
so that we can all live in harmony in cyberspace when using the technology tools, the digital tools, that's an issue. And that is what we mean when we speak of shaping um, the evolution and the use of the internet. Those standards, those principles have to be agreed uh, upon by all of us. And in a multi-sectoral manner, as a multi with multi-stakeholders of the... Mm, uh, uh, stakeholders that is involves all these sectors, regardless of where we stand from where we participate, whether we are a technical community workers or we work uh, in the academia or in a company that uh, is for profit and uh, to produce wealth as most companies or even if we are in the government or uh, in an NGO from any perspective, we must uh, uh, contribute and participate to this definition of the rules. If you look at uh, what has happened historically with the internet, and we thank God for that, is that it's not been a privilege or an exclusive uh, um, advantage for a sector. Of course, uh, in today's world, of course, there are some people who are interested in doing one or two things uh, and most of the things are good but there are also things that are not so good and sometimes even illicit illegal or criminal in some countries but all that stems from uh, norms or laws or policies that are defined with the uh, singularity that although we can see each other to take examples or even beyond our region we can look at other countries other nations in the world in the long run we need to define the rules uh, of uh, coexisting in our region, in our country. So we have to be very specific and it needs to, de it depends on our community. The circumstances in each of our countries differ and, it, and in the regions, the situation also differs. And that's the reason why this year, in just a few days, we're going to celebrate the 16th session of the Internet Governance Forum globally but there are also igfs uh, regionally and we just in we celebrated the 13th um, uh, release of igf uh, in the region and there we got together the Lat people from latin america and the caribbean uh, speaking any language because uh, with simultaneous translation things get much easier but we sit and listen to each other and to debate, to discuss and to, to learn from uh, the experience of other countries, other colleagues that maybe run into this or other problem and uh, maybe they have solved them and uh, maybe they have uh, found uh, the way out. So those are things that we learn and we take to the National Internet Governance Forum that uh, occur are held in each country. This, as any other discipline or areas of interest in the internet, have their own development in their own country. That depends on each community in each country. Uh, it, uh, they, they decide how many IGFs uh, hold, how they do it, how they organize it, to what extent they uh, engage the community. But those are rules. Maybe they are not written, written but they are expected to that we always expect uh, inclusiveness and openness so that everybody feels invited. So this program, Leaders 2.0, with its new approach that in my in my view, the LACNIC must be complemented for that because it's a way we that we can maintain the appeal, the motivation so that more stakeholders, regardless of their age, we are, there are young people like us of different ages that continue to participate. And it is important for us to see new faces, new thoughts, new mindset uh, and uh, outlooks um, so that, uh, that joining us in the internet uh, forums and the intercession activities. That depends on each community, each country, and uh, because it's each country that defines the frequency. For instance, in El Salvador, we 
have organized the Day of the Internet for 13 years, and that day we debate a number of topics with the uh, Salvadorian uh, community, but you may choose what you want. So, as I said earlier, we complement uh, uh, LACNIC and Leaders uh, uh, 2.0 for this project of giving this twist, this approach to strengthen the regional participation in this uh, internet governance processes. I mentioned the book, but we can also mention LAC IGF website, lacigf.org, where you can also check and those who are interested of the 34 attendees we have in this webinar but also other people who other people sorry who received the invitation can also participate in this uh, program do apply to these funds to these projects with new ideas i referred to several options because there you can get ideas not ideas on something specific but something on the regarding the context where you can apply for or present a project or idea and so on. And you can also be even more creative to, than that to go beyond what has in, been included in the documentation and be far more creative. Here is where we encourage people to be creative and the ingenuity that we as Latin Americans and Caribbeans have in the in a context of adverse circumstances for political or economic or other reasons, really figure out ways of really finding incredible solutions. And this will allow us to tackle many of the things that Guillermo referred to, or also other things that we can think of that advocate on issues related to the three major areas of pandemic, inclusion, and so on. So doing all that in a creative way. And one of the other things that I like about Leader is 2.0 is that it is not overly ambitious. It's not a project that will change the destiny of a country or a city. Hopefully that would be the case. But being realistic, these are a bit more modest. So these are things that can really be achieved. Therefore, the call that we're making through this webinar and all the things that we have stated really open up the horizon in order to continue contributing to this joint definition with a multi-stakeholder approach of these new standards and uses for the internet let me make a final comment like igf as an event has been asking, uh, in addition to a consultancy that has been carried out, on which are the additional elements and how we can shape this event to make it more attractive, more inclusive. One of the topics that came up in these forums is that although many of us believe in these issues, really want all sectors to become involved actively. Now, to tell the truth, in many cases, we have received a drop of, in some of the sectors, for example, the private sector that is not so interested now, or also the government that is not participating as intensively. Maybe in these times, the civil society, the technical community, and the academia are more active at this moment, but those who are not participating actively at this moment should really start to participate. We want to really motivate them to start participating. In addition to youth IGF, which wishes to attract young people to this process. And the idea is that we should all really set new challenges of harm uh, where we can live in harmony and to work toward the culmination of many of these goals. So 
participating in Leaders 2.0 will be a great opportunity to continue, to continue encouraging the involvement of the region. Once we start achieving participation in this area, we can expand this participation to other organizations that work for the benefit of the internet in the Latin American and Caribbean region. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lita. It's always a pleasure to listen to you. The same as Raquel and Guillermo. Guillermo, those are very interesting points you touched upon. We still have 10 minutes left. We would like to encourage those of you who are following us, please ask questions. We want to have an interactive session. The idea is to encourage you all to ask questions. So in the last minute we have, please feel free to ask questions. And in the meantime, I think that to expand on what Guillerme was telling us in the sense of how to work during the intercessional uh, period, and so that this is not only limited to the meetings themselves, I wanted to ask Vito and Raquel what they consider or have seen are the needs they detected in their communities in the intercessional period. Vito in El Salvador and Raquel in Brazil, maybe you'd like to tell us how you view this from your standpoint, namely that aspect. I, Yes, I will speak in Portuguese for those who need interpretation. Okay, one, two, three. I would like to thank Guillermo for his words and Lito for his words. In the reflections they made on this subject, I really feel like starting a debate with them. I'd like to congratulate Lito on the award. We said that quite a number of times, but he's not only the father of internet in El Salvador, he's also our uncle. <laughs> well, that's just a joke. So I say these words uh, full of affection and I was so pleased that he received this award. Now, because we don't have much time and regarding participation during the intercessional period, I'd like to refer to something that Guillermo referred to. The forum as a space for having a discussion of internet public policies, both globally, regionally, and nationally. And I'd like to relate this to the decision-making regarding these policies. It happens that very often these policies take place at national level. They are the responsibility of the government. So that incident and that link between the discussion that takes place in the forum and then the impact it has on the adoption and the decision making ultimately is not so clear. So the link between one and the other is not so clear. It's, it might get lost. In other words, there might be, uh, you might have a problem or a risk that involves the security issues and requires immediate decisions. And this does not go through that process of joint dialogue and the participation of all the stakeholders. So the world of the internet makes this difficult because of the complexity of some of the issues and how encompassing that is because it is open, it is global and so on. Therefore, it is 
somehow difficult for one, just one single group to make decisions. So you can ask yourself, why participate? Why ask ourselves these questions? We have a week in which the discussions take place. Guillermo explained how the experience of the young people is. Now the discussions as such take place throughout the year. And they also have a historical background. We really have to consider these processes, not as something homogeneous and in a certain format, but something that can be viewed from different standpoints. At the forum, we have to guarantee that all stakeholders have a voice, that these processes are open, that these are inclusive processes and not exclusive processes, and most of all, that these processes are considered in the context that once a path is established to connect with those stakeholders who are responsible for the decision making. And of course, these stakeholders should be part of the solution. I hope. I was able to explain this, at least theoretically, how an incidence can be achieved. I think it is important to really establish these concepts from the outset. Thank you, Paula. Responding to your question, I'd like to make another suggestion for those of you who are considering participating in this program. And this is the following. We have to see at all times specialization. In other words, what do I like? What is my strength if I'm an engineer, if I'm an expert on security or other technical issues, or if I'm a sociologist, to view this from the social standpoint and how this is bringing about changes in society. So the use of the internet really generates lots and lots of ideas. For example, this pandemic has made it clear that more people have to be connected. There are other issues, legal issues, psychological issues even. So any discipline is welcome. It's not the different sectors, but all different disciplines. So to sum up, each one can find an area that they like, that they are familiar with, and that they can apply as a proposal, used to apply as a proposal, for example, through a podcast or a small meeting or a discussion among friends, for example, three friends who are discussing a given topic, and this is then recorded, or elements that can then generate ideas and knowledge. We can listen to one another and say, well, this is a good idea. Let's just continue progressing on this concept. So the intersessional experiences are precisely these. The issues do not finish once the forum are finished, they have to continue throughout the year. And that is where people can play a role and really, uh, of course, people have to earn their living, but you also ha can have time to dedicate to these different topics. So in other words, to see if you have a specialist on a given topic and then really participate from that standpoint. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much again, Lito. Thank you, Raquel, for your interventions and actually uh, helping us emphasize the need to get involved despite whatever your background is, the need for that involvement in intersessional with and strengthening our governance, uh, understanding both at a local level and seeing how that can impact in the global level uh, what we need to do to strengthen internet development here in the region. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. So it's with that in mind that I'd like to thank all of you for connecting uh, to this webinar today. Uh, I'd like to in particular to thank 
the tremendous uh, contributions that were shared here by Raquel Gato, uh, Lito Ibarra, and Guillermo Alves. Uh, I think that the audience would have truly appreciated these diverse perspectives on the topics we had to discuss here today. I will encourage all of you to please uh, apply to the Leaders Program uh, before the deadline and my colleague will give the very last uh, word on, on those um, details, how to apply. And if you have any other question or issue uh, that occurs to you uh, after the webinar is over on seeing the recording, uh, which will be posted, uh, feel free to write this as well. So I'll give the very last word to Paula, who will share the information on how to remain in contact with us. Thank you, Kevin. Well, thank you all for being with us and uh, for sharing your time with us. Uh, we really appreciate so many participants that uh, uh, joined us. We can never thank enough. So thank you again for being with us. And as Kevin just said, you can check again all the information, leaders uh, uh, to um, point zero, um, and you'll see all uh, the uh, specifications uh, for uh, the uh, for the dates but remember that the 23rd of october that is in just a few days we are closing the application date. so we encourage you as Lito said choose a topic that you like that you feel comfortable with that you're interested in and and your contributions will be more than welcome so um uh, you can and you can also write to leaders at uh, lacnic.net and uh, one of us may answer any questions you may have once again we want to thank the participants and of course we want to thank our speakers for their job and uh, thank you all we are ready to help you and please take care <laughs>